Hi, I'm Lisa. In this video, I will teach you some common expressions that native speakers use in a professional environment. You will listen to my conversation with a young man who works in the professional world. He uses a lot of different expressions that I think will be useful for you to know. In addition, we will analyze the way he's speaking. We will analyze his accent so that you can also practice speaking with a standard American accent. Before you watch the video with my conversation with the native speaker, I want to give you an example of how a non-native speaker might say something and then how a native speaker might say the same thing using some common expressions. And these are expressions that you will hear the native speaker using in this video. For example, a non-native speaker might say, he communicated his ideas well. But a native speaker might say, he was very effective at getting his point across. They might use the expression to get a point across. A non-native speaker might say, he's hardworking and responsible. And a native speaker might say, he's got a good work ethic. You will watch my conversation with Ross. And Ross is an account supervisor for a public relations firm that specializes in sports and entertainment. Ross works with a lot of different athletes and a lot of different brands to get them in the news, for example, in the newspaper or on television or on social media. He also teaches athletes and CEOs how to speak in front of the camera, how to deliver their message well. And Ross will also give you advice on public speaking if you have a foreign accent. So make sure that you watch this video until the end. He gives really valuable advice to non-native speakers of English, people who are nervous to speak in front of the camera or in public because they're nervous about their foreign accent. Let's listen to how Ross answers my first question. I asked him if he's worked with some interesting people or some famous people. And you will notice that Ross speaks pretty quickly. A lot of native speakers do. But pay attention to how he's stressing the words. He slows down on the key words, and that's how native speakers talk. They stress the key words, but they sometimes rush through the unimportant words. Okay, let's listen to Ross, and then I'll come back and I'll teach you some expressions that he used. Yeah, I've met some. I've met some famous folks. I've met some very, very interesting characters in my uh, in my job. I'm a big sports nut, so I met a lot of athletes that I really enjoyed working with. Ross said that he's worked with some famous folks. Yeah, I've met some I've met some famous folks. Make sure you're pronouncing the word folks correctly. The L is silent. And folks is another word for people. So you can say famous people or famous folks. But folks has another meaning that you will learn a little bit later in this video when he talks about a different subject. The next expression is nut. This one is a little casual. Let's listen to how Ross used it. I'm a big sports nut, so I met a lot of athletes that I really enjoyed working with. Ross said, I'm a big sports nut. And a sports nut is a huge fan of sports. Someone who's very enthusiastic and almost obsessed about sports. Another way that we use the word nut is to call someone a health nut. Someone who is a health nut is really concerned about being healthy and about eating super healthy. They only eat very healthy food and they don't eat junk food. They are a health nut. Let's listen to how some people use the words sports nut and health nut. I was a sports nut when I was a kid. I mentioned sports because I'm a sports nut. And he's a health nut. No sugar was allowed at home. Let's listen to another clip of Ross where he's talking about his profession. How would one get into this field? The way that you could get into a field like this is to really work on writing and communication skills. The point is getting your point across. So if you have an effective way of talking, that's the most important thing. So if you can write persuasively, if you can write succinctly, that's super important. I would say that's important for any sort of marketing communications field. Sound like a really hard worker. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I tried, got a good work ethic from my folks. Listen to the way that I use the word one. I asked Ross, how does one get into this field? How would one get into this field? It's very common to say, how does one instead of how does she or he? 
Instead of asking, how should it be done? We say, how does one do that? How does one become a therapist? One simply means someone. Let's listen to the pronunciation of the word point. Ross used it two times. Pay careful attention to how he pronounced it. The point is getting your point across. He said, the point is getting your point across. Let's say that again. The point is getting your point across. We didn't pronounce the T, right? Because we connect it and the next word begins with a vowel sound. But before the T, there's an N. Point across. When you get your point across, that means you succeed at making people understand what you want to tell them. You communicate your message well, you get your point across. Some people use their hands a lot when they want to get a point across. Ross explained, in order for people to be good at his job, they need to be good writers. And he used the word succinct. He said succinctly. Let's listen. If you can write persuasively, if you can write succinctly, that's super important. He said, if you can write persuasively, if you can write succinctly, that's super important. If something is succinct, it's clearly expressed. There are no wasted words. It's expressed well in a few words. You can say, you expressed your point very succinctly in the meeting. Please state the facts to the judge as succinctly as possible. Don't use extra words. Don't talk a lot. Ross said he got his work ethic from his folks. You sound like a really hard worker. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I tried. Got a good work ethic from my folks. If I say my folks, do you know what that means? That means my parents. So his folks, his parents. Folks means people. But if we use a possessive pronoun in front of folks, for example, my folks, his folks, her folks, that means parents. I'm spending the weekend with my folks. We're spending Christmas with my husband's folks. Let's listen to how some other people used my folks. I came from a middle-class family. My folks got divorced. My folks are from the Midwest, Missouri. And Ross said his folks gave him a strong work ethic. I, I tried, got a good work ethic from my folks. And work ethic means a belief that hard work is important and that hard work is morally good. So we can say, he has a strong work ethic. He has a good work ethic. He has an outstanding work ethic. He works very hard. And now let's listen to Ross giving advice about public speaking, especially if you have an accent. He gives some very good advice that I agree with. Let's listen to him and then I'll come back. The greatest tip I can give for someone to be effective communicating in front of a camera or in any conversation really is do not sound rehearsed. Uh, memorizing a story that's word for word correct or word for word exactly one concept really loses the interest of the person who's listening because they think that, oh, they've been practicing so many times, you sound like a robot. And especially in a business setting, if you sound like a robot, people think that maybe you're not being serious or maybe you're covering something up. The most effective messengers and the most effective people that deliver any sort of conversation, let alone in a business or, or a personal setting are ones that can talk like they've known the information for years. And the interesting thing is most people who are put in a situation where they're being asked a question do know the information. Right. They just get uncomfortable and think that, oh, I need to say exactly the right thing. I see. If you think about it, you know more about accent reduction than literally everyone, 99.999% of people. Um, if someone asked you about it, if you talk naturally about what you do and how you do it, it's going to sound way better than accent reduction is X, Y, and Z. Here's how I do accent reduction. It, you come off as a much more regular person and it's easier for me to connect to you. There's an old adage about people choose presidents on who they want to have a beer with. Yes. It's exactly that point. Most people don't really care about the policy of the person who's running for president. They want to know, does that people, person seem like a good friend or, a yes. good, or just nice? And you don't really do that if you seem like a robot because it makes people go, oh, what's going on? Why are they not talking normally? And it's, it's, I mean, it's more prevalent than ever now. My thought is, imagine you're talking to your friends. Imagine you're talking in your native language. People 
feel that confidence and it eases their expectations. They don't expect, no one expects you to be perfect because your job is not to be perfect, your job is to do your job. People trust you when you are speaking as an authority. If you're a researcher, if you speak with an accent, it doesn't matter. You're in that room for a reason. You are the authority on the topic. So people are gonna trust you. So you don't have to worry about convincing them. You have to worry about being calm and being relaxed in your delivery. Ross said his number one tip is do not sound rehearsed. The greatest tip I can give for someone to be effective communicating in front of a camera or in any conversation really is do not sound rehearsed. And to rehearse something means to practice it like an actor or like a singer and to memorize something word for word. Ross says that if you memorize something word for word, and that means every word exactly, that you will sound rehearsed and you will lose the interest of the person who's listening to you. Also, you will not sound natural. You will sound like a robot. And why is that bad? Because he says people might think that you're covering something up. And especially in a business setting, if you sound like a robot, people think that maybe you're not being serious or maybe you're covering something up. To cover something up means to hide something. So if you sound too rehearsed, people might get the impression that you're not telling the truth, that you're trying to hide something. Ross's advice for you, if you have an accent, is to speak naturally because you will come off as a regular person. Let's listen to how he used come off. You come off as a much more regular person and it's easier for me to connect to you. To come off as means to appear, to seem to be, to give a certain impression to people. We can say, she's very shy and quiet, so sometimes she comes off as arrogant. During the job interview, I hope I didn't come off as unprofessional. Let's listen to the way Ross used the word adage. There's an old adage about people choose presidents on who they want to have a beer with. Yeah. Ross said, there's an old adage, people choose presidents on who they want to have a beer with. An adage is a wise saying, a proverb, a common observation, or an accepted truth. For example, people say, no pain, no gain, or don't count your chickens until they hatch, or early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Those are examples of adages or of proverbs. Ross was explaining that people vote for a president based on if they would feel comfortable having a beer with that person. This particular adage became popular in the year 2004 when people were voting for the president and it was between George Bush and John Kerry. Two months before the election, undecided voters were polled and they were asked, who would you prefer to have a beer with, George Bush or John Kerry? And the majority of people said George Bush. And the newspaper USA Today published these findings. They said, President Bush, despite his many problems, strikes most of the American people as a pretty nice guy, the kind of guy they would feel comfortable with if he showed up at their front door. That's an interesting fact about American politics, I think. So, if you want to come off well, I suggest that you just relax and you enjoy speaking English. And remember what Ross says, you are the authority. You have that job because people believe you can do it. You are an expert in your field. Be confident about that. That's more important than the sound of your English. So many of my students get paralyzed with fear because they need to speak English in public. They need to make a presentation and they're so nervous about their accent. They're so nervous about making pronunciation mistakes. And yes, it is important to work on your pronunciation and your English skills in general. But remember, you are an expert in something. You're educated, you're professional, and if you speak naturally, if you just communicate who you are, even if you're making mistakes, people will trust you. They will see you as a leader. And here is a quote by the American author Henry David Thoreau. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you imagined. 
So don't let the way you speak English now prevent you from pursuing your dreams. But meanwhile, keep working on your English skills. And remember, slow progress is still progress. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To learn all of the rules for a good American accent, you can buy my online video courses at accurateenglish.com.